of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And tonight, I wanted to introduce you to the new next phase for the farm here in the mountains. And that is this, the beginning, the very, very beginning moments of going off-grid entirely. We do still pay for power, and uh, we have talked about it since the day we moved up here, what it would take to go completely off-grid. For those of you who are interested in solar energy, there'll be a whole series as I go through learning the ropes. Um, solar is an interesting technology. I mean, the cost of solar panels has come way down. The uh, cost per watt, anyway, of solar power has gone way down. Storage costs, when we first moved up here, that is what stopped us. To get a bank of deep cell batteries that would power a house in the kilowatt range was an enormous cost. And battery technology has come a long way in those six years. Instead of using deep cell batteries or AGM batteries, we're now looking at lithium battery packs. And the cost of those lithium battery packs is coming down to a reasonable price, which is, you know, still expensive, but reasonable. Anyway, what you see here, and I'll go through this right now, is the beginning. This is 400 watts. There's another 400 watts of panel sitting in the boxes out of, outside of range here. The idea for phase one is 1,600 watts total uh, power coming in off these panels. At a premium, you know, that is a, at a best case scenario. Usually you get somewhere in the 60 to 75 percent range of these panels, depending on your lighting conditions. But we have that. Now, this is what was interesting for those of you who are thinking about going and trying to get into solar, trying to go off grid, or at least partially off grid. There are a lot of kits uh, out there for 400 watt kits or starter kits, 200 watt, 600, 800 watt kits. And the problem that you will find with nearly all of them is the kits are designed for that amount of wattage. It doesn't really give you anything to grow on. The panels are obviously reusable, but this thing right here, which is the solar charge controller, oftentimes the kits that you buy that are 200 watt or 400 watt or six or whatever, will come with a charge controller that's only capable of handling the amount of voltage and amperage that the kit provides. So if you want to go from a 400 watt kit to an 800 or to a, a you know, much higher wattage, oftentimes you're left with a bunch of equipment that's no longer any good. What I have here is four 100 watt solar panels. These are monocrystalline. These are from HQST, I believe it is. HSQL something. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the brand, but they're, they're pretty nice. I've been talking with them. Yeah, HQST. So those panels are there. Obviously those are expandable. You can use polycrystalline instead of monocrystalline. Technology is slightly different. One's a little less expensive. These were actually more expensive by, by a few cents a watt. And then this is the main component that you're going to be looking at. There's two big investments that you have to make if you're going to do this right the first time. This is one of them. This is a solar charge controller. This is an 80 amp solar charge controller. If I had bought a 400 watt kit from say Renology or whatever the brand is there, it would have come with panels that would have looked very similar to this, but the charge controller may have only been a 20 amp kit and that really would have maxed it out. It would have been a 12 volt kit, 20 amp charger, probably an 8 or a 1,000 watt uh, inverter, and I'll get to this next. This is not the inverter for this kit. It just hasn't arrived yet, but I put it out here just so I can show you what we're talking about here. But now this is an 80 amp. This one is also a different MPPT, which uh, really, and this is, this is where I'm learning, so there's some of you out here who may be interested in this stuff that know more about this than me, but your regular kits, the, uh, the regular... It's Harbor Freight kit, which I had looked at because Harbor Freight sells a lot of great stuff. I hadn't heard the best stuff about their solar, but you know what? I've had great luck with them, so I, I looked into that at first. It comes with a different type of charge controller, and it's an all-or-nothing charge controller. It just basically can't take small amounts of wattage. So if this panel is in partial shade or it's a really cloudy day, and this thing's only producing a few watts of energy, those uh, other types of controllers, which are far less expensive, will not charge at all. They have to have that 12 volts or they have nothing. Where this can take one volt out of each one of these panels and still channel that voltage and amperage down to a charging bank, which is, which is a great advantage, but it certainly costs more. So anyway, I picked up that. I'll do a whole video on installing all this stuff and getting it right. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where the placement of this is going to be. Because again, this array is starting off as an 800 watt array, but I plan to double it as soon as the funds are available to do so. And then it may uh, you know, add on to it even more. This is capable of holding up to 1800 watts at 24 volts. 
and and let's gosh this is just so much stuff i'm going to try to pack into one video here i should probably break it up but this will just be an introduction i'll get into these things later on this is going to be a 24 volt system each one of these puts out 12 volts actually it's more around 18 but you have some line loss stuff like that so i'm going to double i'm going to be pack, packing these in so two two of them going together you'll end up with a 24 volt system there are reasons for that and it has to do with the thickness of the gauge of wiring if i wanted to run this at 12 volts, I would end up having to have battery cables that were twice the thickness of these going to my inverter box and so on and so forth, volts versus amperage. And there are people out there that handle this a lot better than I'm going to be able to. But just briefly, that's what's going on. This box is capable of doing 12, 24, 36, or 48. Eventually, I'd like to move to a 48 volt system, but for right now, finances being what they are, this was what I could start off with, 800 watts, with a 2,000 watt inverter, 24 volt inverter, the inverter I'm still waiting on. Right here you can see I have a 400 watt inverter. This is a 12 volt, 400 watt inverter. This is something you would hook up to your car battery for camping or whatnot. Or you might put this in a, in a van or a camper and have this for 120 volt. And what these things do is they're converting the 12, or in this case 24 volt energy, into 120 volt energy. And so you're able to take it, and of course there's losses in there, but that is part of the process. Now the cost for this system, I tried to make this as cheap as possible without cheapening out. Does that make sense? Uh, the panels are actually the least expensive part of the setup when you really get into it, especially for the size or the amount of panels that I purchased. These were about $65 to $75 a piece online, depending on the brand and whether you get monocrystalline or polycrystalline. So they're not that much. This box here, however, was quite expensive. It was over $200 the inverter, a 2000 watt inverter, and that's just a 120 inverter, it doesn't do 220. That inverter was over $200, so this has been a lot of, of saving to get ready for this big push. But again, the, the reason I decided to go with these higher end equipment here and, and in the inverter was that I wouldn't have to replace them the second I wanted to add more panels, because obviously the plan is to eventually go completely off grid. Now, will a 400 or 800 watt system get you there? Not in this world, buddy. I mean, if you want to live in a camper or an RV, maybe. You know, those already have efficient uh, pieces of machinery in there. The refrigerator is often a 12-volt direct connect. And, you know, your water heater is a small little water heater. But not at our house. Our house is a conventional house with a, a large water heater, a dishwasher, washer, dryer. And even though we purchased all kinds of, a, a, you know, equipment that is HE, you know, high efficiency, it still doesn't mean that it's going to run off of 2,000 watts of electricity. And so, the, to be realistically speaking, we're looking at maybe a five-year process here where every year the system gets added onto, more batteries get added to the bank, more panels get added, and eventually we add a second one of these and a second inverter. Both those inverters get upsized eventually, and we end up with two 120 legs running off of two separate systems that backfeed into the, into the uh, grid or into into our solar, our box, our, our power box at the house. So some of the other equipment that I had to pick up in order to make this thing work for right now, a lot of these, I don't have them all here, but these are the, the wiring runs that link these together. There's actually several types you're gonna need. These are splitter combiners, so you're taking the two panels and you're splitting them together so you get that 24 volts as opposed to 12. So I have a bunch of those, and then a bunch of cables like these that actually run those cables down to the charger and burner box. The charger box is right here. From this, I'll be splicing one end of this off. This will get cut, and this goes into here, and this will go to the actual inverter. I'm sorry, this will go to the actual battery itself, the battery bank. So this will come out of here, go to a battery bank. Batteries, holy cow. That is where the big hang-up is right now. I'm still struggling to come up with the money to buy what I need so that I don't waste money over and over again. Batteries, I'm looking to get a lithium ion battery in the five kilowatt range to start with, and then something that I can add on. I eventually want to have about 25 kilowatts of, of available energy stored in batteries because we do get a lot of cloudy days up here. But that's what I've got for those, and there's several more different size ones because right now what we're doing is we're starting off with um, regular lead acid batteries, and I've only purchased a few of those because I don't want to waste the money. They have a shelf life of three to five years up here where it's very cold, I'm going to guess it's going to be in the three-year range. I don't want to spend the money on those, so we're just going to put a, a few together to get us started, to get us partially off-grid. I'm going to be powering the radios, and a lot of this garage that I'm sitting in right here will be powered off of that. And then as the system grows to a larger size, it'll start powering the two barns. 
take care of all the critters, you know, with heating the uh, water heaters in the winter, that kind of stuff for, for the animals and the barns. And that'll be pretty much where it stays for a while. The next big push will be then to add that second leg to double the size of the system one last time and then try to go completely off grid. In the meantime, we'll be looking at solutions for water heater. For uh, Our stove has already been upgraded to a gas stove. We do have electric heat, but we don't use it. We just use propane and wood burning stove to heat the house, so that shouldn't be an issue. Although it's a shame to have a house with a, a fairly new electric heater that just doesn't get used, but it is what it is. And then uh, the refrigerator is already high efficiency. It operates off of 60 watts once it kicks on. Deep freeze over here, same thing. So the high efficiency, 60 watts is about all it pulls. So there's some things we've already done in preparation for this, but there's still some things we'll have to do along the way. I'll be showing uh, as the weather warms up, it's snowing right now as we speak, I'll be showing you how I go ahead and mount these. I'm probably going to be mounting these to the top of the garage or the top of the cellar and uh, we'll be installing those, looking at the best sunlight array. We don't have a great view of the south, but uh, I can get probably four to five hours of good sunlight in the position that I'm going to put them in, and that ought to be enough for what I'm looking to do. Also got some cutoff switch here so the battery bank can be independently shut down. That's in that box there. And some battery connectors. The other thing I had to purchase, this I do kind of feel like solar company should be including this, are these mounting brackets, so each one of these has four brackets you can put bolt onto it so you can attach it to wood frames or metal frames. That really should have come with these, but it does not. So, and then you're having burger cable kits, and I'm not gonna open that up, but again, just heavy gauge wiring. So that's it. I am Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. I'm glad that you came by the channel. If you're interested in renewable energy sources, this will be kind of the poor man's version of how to go about doing this smartly, if that makes any sense. I'm not even sure smartly is a word, but it should be. This is just so you don't make a mistake and buy a small kit up front with the idea that, hey, I'll expand this later on, only to find out that other than the solar panels, you're done. So by doing it this way, where you have a box that's way expandable, this one at 48 volts can go up to like 3,000 watts, I believe, maybe even more. At 24, which is where I'm going to have it for uh, most of its lifespan, it's capable of 1,800 watts. I'm planning a 1,600 watt system, so that's perfect. Again, the inverter, if you buy a small system, it comes with you know an 800 watt, 12 volt inverter, and you decide to go to 24 volts, immediately you're having to replace the inverter. Immediately you're finding out it's not putting out enough amperage or wattage for the appliances you want to run. So I, I, that's what this is going to be all about. Now, we'll get a piece of plywood. I'll be mounting all this stuff together when that inverter shows up. We'll get our wires run. We'll figure out where we're going to put this. We'll probably have our long wire run here coming down off and we'll probably have a panel right here in the garage to run this stuff. What I plan on doing is I have a fuse box out here. I'm going to cut power to this. Other than my lift, which is 220, the rest of this garage operates on 110. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about the lift. These can be converted to 110. Uh, you know, shortens the life of the, of the motor a little bit, but I honestly hardly... You know, when it comes to raising and lowering this thing, we're talking about a very low run time. So I'm not sure if that would be that big of a deal. And there's other ways around it. If I wanted to add a second leg, even with just one system, there are ways to do that. So I could get limited 220 power out here if I needed to. That's, uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll stick around and learn with me as we go through the installation of a solar system. And, and, and learn really what works and what doesn't together here on Farpoint Farms. Until next time, take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Farpoint Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.